All right, have and have not fans, strap yourselves in because this is a video I'm sure is going to be chocked full of controversy. Uh, it has to do with two themes. I will go to basically the, again, and you'll notice kind of a trend in some of my videos, and I'll even tell you beforehand. In some cases, when I'm writing out my ideas for what videos to do in regards to the series, uh, sometimes I'll look closely at two different video ideas and then figure that. Hey, you know what? These are so closely related. I might as well slap them into one big video. And this is it. And it has to do with the most talked about thing about not only the mid-season finale coming up, but also the last episode. Uh, it's debatable. You, most people have been talking about the car scene flipping in the preview for the mid-season finale next Tuesday. And trust and believe I will be doing a video on that very shortly because I'm in the middle of recording this one, obviously. Uh, looking at my list right in front of me, the car, uh, believe it or not, the car flipping is the next video I'm going to do. So I don't know the order in which I'm uploading the videos, but just know that, hey, it is coming. It is coming. Now, looking over, looking over the um, idea is two topics of one, Candace's grief. I'm just going to talk about the entire funeral scene itself, the funeral home scene. Uh, number two, Candace giving up someone for her clean slate. Now. When looking at the funeral scene, I've said this in uh, another video as well, that Benny, Candace, and Hannah performed one hell of a show right there. I mean, arguably, I mean, well, I, you know what? I'm going to be honest. Hannah's, you know, crying out in the hospital when Quincy Jr. was taken there after the shootout. That's probably hands down the best performance of this season so far. May I dare say one of the top three, if not the top, uh, performance in the actual series itself and that's saying something now the interactions between all the characters honestly and I, if you've been following me since you know the beginning of the season you'll know that this scene here where they're all, all going to be fighting i've been looking forward to this since the actual preview of this season itself and that was back in um ugh, probably early or late spring or you know something like that but just know that these three definitely definitely brought their a-game with the acting i'm glad you know benny wasn't silent hannah didn't say much but she it looks like in the next episode she's going to be laying it down there was a clip released today on the has and have nots official page uh where candace talks about you know how you hate me so what did I do to make you hate me so much that you would let my son die just to get back at me to spite me? I can't wait for the day that it's you laying in a wooden box so I can spit on it and you'll be burning and you'll be buried in an unmarked grave. And I was like, what the? F and then Hannah killed. She killed it with this one scene. I mean, excuse me, this one line that ended the uh, video clip. She said, you just predicted your own funeral. And I'm just like, damn. It goes back to when, you know, back during season one, where she told everybody that, you know, her mother was dead. Remember back in episode one at the Jim's birthday party, you know, when she first meets Veronica, Candace and whatnot. And uh, she talked about, you know, what her family does. Like her father, I forgot was like, uh, oh gosh, I, 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 I don't think it was truck driver. Again, this was way back episode one you know i remember a lot of details but basically she she was lying of course she said her mother was dead right as hannah was there standing serving out drinks so oh my god oh my god and my mom and i was talking to my mom about the about it this weekend she was like you know what what hannah just said you know it goes back to season one where she was talking about how her mom was dead that was like her predicting her own son being dead i was just like whoa that's crazy and when hannah said that it's like you just predicted your own funeral it reminded me of the Ten Commandments, you know, the scene where uh, Ramsey said that, hey, you know what? We're going to kill the firstborn, starting with the son of Moses. And Nefertiri came to Moses to tell him about it and then sent him his son and his wife away. And uh, Moses said that in Ramsey's or Pharaoh's own arrogance, he mocked God. And by doing so, he cursed his own son to die. So it goes back to, you know, I believe that what Hannah said. I believe what she said to be true about Candace. It makes a lot of sense. So, oh my, in an unmarked grave, that sounds, again, remember Candace has been on the verge of death many times. That you know, Warlock, Quincy, uh, Mama Rose. Oh, wow. It's like, I, I'm just speechless even thinking about it. 
but just that one scene itself that shows that next week is going to pick up, excuse me, pick up where we left off, as well as I believe Catherine showing up right as Candace is about to leave, based off this, uh, you know, a little bit of what we saw in the mid-season finale preview, and you know, the Lord give and the Lord take it away, but Candace isn't trying to, you know, hear that. You know what? You can keep your God. Oh gosh, it's crazy. I mean, Benny's trying to, you know. Benny can't even utter out a word about Candace, you know, tell him to hush, you know, just put her arm up. So she is two through. Now, let's talk about this scene as a whole. You know, we're getting the preparations at hand, the funeral's tomorrow. They're, you know, finishing up the last touches. Candace shows up, isn't having it. She doesn't want Catherine paying for it. She doesn't want that casket. She wants another casket, ripping up the obituary. Doesn't want him buried in the church. I believe she said he's going to be buried at Sims, but he needs to get a plot. That I mean, honestly, with those three, again, fantastic acting. I have to say that I felt so bad for that funeral director. He did not sign up for all this drama. And I'm sure he's had some troublesome families in the past, but never like this. Uh, just a quick question here. Uh, technically speaking, Hannah, you know, even though Quincy Jr. is dead, would still be the legal guardian, correct? So wouldn't her thoughts, opinions, and, you know, I guess you could say request for the funeral trump even Candace's demands, even though she's the mother. I mean, again, I'm not really an expert on these kind of laws, but I just wanted to get, you know, um, somebody that maybe have more insight than I do just to answer that question. Uh, the second thing is, oh, oh, this was actually a big thing too. When Candace was saying that she'd get the money, you know, I believe it was like six grand or so or 7,000, you know, to have the plot at Sims and the casket and everything like that set up. She said she'd get the money, and again, I believe she said uh, she have it within 24 hours, and he'll he's going to be buried on a Thursday, I believe, at, you know, at Sims. And, uh, you know, that's when Hannah put two and two together about, you know, hey, you're blackmailing that Charles guy, the presidential candidate. He was on TV, you know, giving, sending his love to the young family, saying he knew us well, and that explains our Secret Service had Benny locked up, you know, for that time because you're the one messing around with him. And again, it's just great to see that kind of interaction because at first, you know, Hannah was right in what Candace's original intentions were. But, oh, I didn't only record it you one time because I wanted you to come back or something like that. It was crazy. But just the fact that she's right about this and even Benny, when he jumped in saying that it's just a cycle. And Hannah even said it's at the hospital after Quincy was killed, you know, about it's a never ending cycle. It's your sister. She does this. And most people are like Hannah just blaming Candace as always. But at the same time, Candace is always putting herself in these situations and her family members and loved ones are the ones who have to suffer because of that. When you really think about it. Now, one of the biggest points I want to make in regards to Quincy Jr. If Candace does get the money and it looks like she's going to earn, well, excuse me, get the fund through ill gotten gains. Bet money, and again, I'm willing to put money on this. If she gets her uh, hands on that money through one of her um, dirty connections or, you know, blackmail somebody, or maybe she'll get it, get the money from somebody she's on good terms with now, but eventually it'll be like a warlock situation where she lied. She does something to make them her enemy, and then they'll dig up the poor boy out the ground and take his body or something like that. I could see that happening because you look at the fact that she tried to do right by Benny in terms of, you know, hey, I want to give you this house and this tow company because she got the money because she loves her brother. But she got the funds and everything through ill gotten gains. But when the funk fit, hit the fan, when the funk hit the fan, <laughs> I think about Steve Harvey show. They ended up being thrown. He, Benny got in, you know, ended up being dragged out of his own house. So I could see Quincy Jr. being dug up and dra dr drug out of his own, well, dug up and drug out of his own grave as a result of his mom doing something stupid. And I guess that leads to a question. I mean, most people are asking whose car is, you know, going to end up wrecked in the uh, mid season finale? I guess you could say a bigger question is who's going to be the person who uh, helps Candace pay for the funeral? I mean, we have several different options here when you think about it. Uh, number one, I mean, I. I and again, I honestly can't even pick one because they're all so viable. Number one, remember Mama Rose owes Candace a favor due to the whole Warlock thing, bringing Warlock exactly where she wanted him. Number two, uh, she can act. I mean, it looked like she was going to get the money from Jim because based off the preview, it looks like, you know, Jim, uh, Candace is knocking on Jim's door, but that's not the case. It looks like Candace is going back to her hotel room. Jim catches her in the hallway and then goes up to her and they have a little brief brief conversation so you could ask that you know 
you oh, excuse me you could theorize that hmm maybe he'll she'll get the money from jim you know if they have sex because remember you know jim is still like hey i'll pay you for it blah 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 so that leads me into thinking that if it did come down to it, I could see it being a reverse of episode one. They're reading at a hotel, have sex. There's money on the, you know, the dresser. And then that's the end of that. Another possible theory is probably the most obvious one, even as Hannah predicted. Hey, Charles, you're blackmailing him. But Candace would probably get the money without blackmailing Charles. Because at this point, you know, he's really starting to have feelings for her. So Charles is another viable candidate. No pun intended on him being a candidate uh, for the president of the United States. Another possible one is maybe even Mitch might help out because Mitch wanted to help out from the get go. But uh, Catherine, you know, kind of stepped in saying, you know what, I'm going to be the one to do this is OK. So, you know, kind of step back. I'm going to help my friend out. And, uh, you know, I ju I'm just kind of like this isn't even his own video. I, I don't even think it merits his own video. I could have done a video on it, but I just wanted to put it all together. Uh, those are just a few candidates in terms of, you know, Candace getting the money for a Quincy Jr.'s funeral and on her own terms. So. Again, I think that it's um, kind of ridiculous that she's just going to throw everything away because even though she's having bad, had bl bad blood with the criers and her f mom since episode one, it's about her son having a peaceful, you know, going away, so to speak. And now she's just going to ruin everything. So even though people will say, you know, I hate can uh, excuse me, I hate Hannah, she's hypocritical, all this and that. Let the boy rest in peace. But I dare say that if Candace gets those funds the way we're, we're used to her, seeing her get money, I don't even think the poor boy can rest in his grave because I think an enemy will come after him even when he's dead to get back at Candace. So I just feel that that's sad. That's sad. Uh, that goes on to my next point about the video in regards to given the fact that she's lashing out even at Benny and Benny, you know, again, I just give him props for stepping up, not just for taking his mom's side, but seeing the truth. And it goes back to, you know, Amanda way back at the end of season two and the last scene we saw her a lot. Well, not the last scene we saw her a lot. The last scene was when she was running around the house with a gun. The last scene she had with her parents was when she put two and two together, just like Hannah did with Charles in regards to figuring out that, you know, the affair thing was true about what Quincy said about Jim having an affair with Candace. And she was so upset by that. Uh, that goes back to Benny, you know, putting two and two together, not just, you know, because it's understandable given the fact that, you know, she, he is right in terms of Hannah always assuming the worst about Candace. But the problem is 9.99 .99 times out of 10, Hannah is correct. So the fact that he stood up, not just because Hannah didn't say much of anything that scene. And again, it goes back to this look that Candace gave Hannah when she first walked into the funeral home. And again, we've seen these two go back and forth since episode one, but my heart just broke. Not just that Hannah being, you know, so distraught by the situation at hand, because just based off how she was looking, based off Candace glaring at her when she first walked into the funeral home, you can still tell she was still shaken from what Candace said to her over the phone in regards to why didn't you protect my son? Why didn't you save him? So even though Candace, and again, this is me being, you know, real about the situation, not me picking favorites. You could see that it was Candace speaking out of grief in regards to you're the one who got to, she didn't say all this, but basically what she was saying is in no, you know, in lamest terms is like, you're the one who got custody of my child yet you couldn't protect him during the shootout, so he's dead. I can understand that because that's grief. But she went to another level of cold bitch when she said it should have been you that got shot instead of him. So in regards to the first statement, in regards to why didn't you protect my son, Hannah was just, you know, felt like she failed because she was the legal guardian of Quincy Jr. This isn't me talking about the fact that Candace... Candace's actions are what led to Warlock finding them. Yes, Hannah did go to war. War sent one of his goons to follow Hannah to figure out where they were at. So yes, indirectly or inadvertently, or I guess you say unknowingly, Hannah is responsible for Warlock discovering their location. But remember, Candace was the reason. Candace was the reason that Warlock was looking for her anyway. Remember, because of the lie. Yes, Mitch was the one to ruin things by putting the drugs in his trunk, having, you know, the Malone connections and the police department have him arrested 
and then Jim, of course, you know, dropped the ball about the 7.4 million. Then when Mitch himself got arrested, he said that, hey, I was doing to put the drugs in the trunk. Oh, I'm still going to get that bitch anyway because she lied to me about the money. So, yes, multiple people play factors. But at the end of the day, uh, excuse me, end of the day, it is because of Candace, because of Candace. So, again, the fact that she felt heartbroken over the fact. Remember, she was still grieving over losing her grandson, holding his dead body. Then her then, you know, the child's mom called in saying that, why didn't you protect my son? And then she just hit a new level of low when she said it was you that should have got shot. You know what? This isn't me wishing death on anybody or, you know, bodily harm, but it's wishing that Hannah was the one that got shot when it should have been you that got shot because Benny said he was looking for you. We were there. Mama did everything she could to protect her grand, protect your son. Because remember, Hannah was crying out, stop, stop this fight and we're in here too. And then that's when she runs to the bathroom and then, you know, Quincy got shot up. So I really, I, I don't even know what to say anymore because I feel like I've said it over and over again. And, whew, and again, I did a video about, you know, who loved Quincy Jr. more, Candace or Hannah. And I, I again, that scene was so powerful because in some points I can get where Candace is coming from because she's speaking out of grief. So some of the stuff she's probably saying but she doesn't mean it but the fact that she's showing so much disdain and hatred towards hannah despite her doing everything she could it's just disgusting i can't i i, I can't take it so when she says you know like i can't wait for you to be the one in the wooden box i'm going to spit on your unmarked grave while you burn as hannah said she just predicted her own funeral so i think it goes about saying you know maybe Maybe Candace will see the light before things, you know, get this bad. But at first, I mean, I don't think it's too late for Candace. But at this point, I feel like she's dug her own grave, not six feet. I feel like she dug a grave that's like 48 feet deep because she just keeps going on and on and on. I honestly don't know what's going to happen next. Like, I, I'll still do predictions. But in terms of Candace, like as Hannah said, you know, you just predicted your own future. I don't know. Like, who's going to be the one to p finally put Candace down if she ever does get killed off? And, you know, I can see Benny and Hannah at the funeral right now, and Hannah will be crying because, you know, she was right about what Candace said, just predicting her own funeral. Whew. So that was that was a lot. I'm sorry. That was a lot. I mean, this video is almost 20 minutes long, but that was a lot. And I felt like I got a lot, a lot off my chest. The scene again was fantastic. The actors, they pulled, they pulled, they put their A game into that. Tyler did great writing again when she opened that casket I almost fell out of my seat I swear because um, I was talking to my mom she's like oh I, I saw it coming I'm like how because I believe they said some along the lines of you know oh he's ready and then he asked a question about open or closed casket I, I, I didn't think I caught the exact dialogue where they say you know like he was in the coffin I, I'm not saying my mom was wrong. I, I believe she, I, I'm pretty sure she's right because I was, uh, you know, tweeting a lot during the episode. So I probably missed some things. But overall, you know, when she opened that coffin and then she started getting choked up, even I, I felt I felt like everybody felt that pain. Like, you know, again, that was a moment where it's like Candace, you know, was going off on a fit and a rage because of her grief. But when she opened that coffin, that's when it felt real. Kind of like when um, kind of like when uh, Catherine and Jim looked at Amanda's body in the body bag. It, it was real for them and that's when it set in so i believe in the next episode where things picked up well excuse me pick up that's when candace is really going to go in on hannah and just go way too far so uh with that being said um it goes back to the other point i mentioned before with candace showing so much disdain towards hannah and benny do you think do you think that she's willing to just throw everything away and allow Benny to get arrested for the murder of Quincy to have a fresh start because it seems like she's completely done with her family because even Benny was heartbroken. It's like, who are you talking to? It's like, you always beg me for money and about your dreams because I love you. I have nobody else to talk to. And yeah, you gave me the money, but nobody told me to, and I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you to sell your ass to get it. I was just like, damn Benny. So, I don't know with Candace being this hateful right now. I don't know. 
she'll probably she's probably willing to let Charles, you know, do what he what uh, do what he wanted for, to begin with, and have Benny arrested so Candace can have a fresh start and pretty much leave everything else behind. And in the preview, it looks like you know it looks like Candace is getting arrested at the hotel because it looks like this cop is dragging her out because based off her uh, pos- you know body language and position, it looks like she's handcuffed and being dragged out. And uh, people are kind of looking at this scene, you know, during the uh, police taking Candace out of the hotel. They're kind of looking like, you know, what's going on. So if she gets arrested, you know, who knows? Maybe, just maybe, she'll let Benny take the fall, have Charles, you know, do what he wanted to do, do, excuse me, do what he wanted to do to begin with and go from there. And then, you know, down the road, that's when she might get killed as like, um, it's like Hannah predicted. Well, excuse me, not Hannah predicted, but more like said that, Candace, you predicted your own funeral. So... There's no telling where the story is going to go. I just hope that this mid-season finale is going to be as good as the ending of the last episode. So with that being said, I just wanted to let you know this video was all about my thoughts about Candace's understandable grief, but then taking it to a whole new level of low where she shouldn't have gone with and her possibly railroading her brother to get, you know, up in life as well as, you know, just proclaiming her own funeral while also declaring her hatred for Hannah. So comment section below one two three go because i feel like you all are just going to say a lot of great content and please keep yourself posted my channel because i have more videos on the way